Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for another episode of Living Hope. The one show that tries to give you some hope, inspiration, and education about pancreatic cancer. And the many people, how they deal with it on a daily basis, friends, family, communities. With the one person who's at the center of that community in that conversation, privilege to have with us each and every week, Roberta Luna. Hey, Roberta. You've been at the center of the community since your struggle began 19, 20 years ago. I always forget. 20, yeah, 20, 20 years, 20, a good yeah. round number, 20 years ago. Yep. And you've really um, embedded yourself into the community. Everybody seems to know your name and everybody's glad you came. And you're the cheerful voice cheering us on here. So today you brought some other cheerleaders with you. Who'd you bring today here? Thank you, just real quick. I don't know if everybody's happy to know my name or not, but anyway, they're, they're stuck with me. So here we go. <laughs> I'm so happy to have Sarah Banks joining us again. Sarah is director for the Hirschberg Foundation for the Pancreatic Cancer Research, which means she has her hands in everything, especially in the LA Cancer Challenge. Is that Did I say that right? Did I get that all right in there? Yes, it's a mouthful, mouthful. but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming back and talking to us and uh, about the LA Cancer Challenge. I'm really excited this year, and uh, but before we get there, I want you to tell us what exactly is the LA Cancer Challenge. Uh, the LA Cancer Challenge is a walk run that benefits the Hirschberg Foundation for Pancreatic Cancer Research. So it's a 5K uh, walk run that takes place at UCLA Wilson Plaza every single year. And this year is our 25th anniversary. So we've got a lot of activities there and We've had this going for quite a while, and we're really excited about this this special anniversary for the event. Yes, and we are too. And before we get that far, uh, when and where is, I know you did say where, but when is it in the time, if you can give us that? It's October 23rd, and the time, let's see, you can do registration at 7.30, program open, opening ceremonies begin at 8, and the race begins at 9. And is it a... It's at UCLA. It's at UCLA's Wilson Plaza. You want to just give us the website real quick that they can go and register at? Sure. You can go to www.lacancerchallenge.com. I mean, every year that you do this, it's it's special. I'm not don't want to take anything away, but this year is extremely special because it is your 25th. I don't want to, do you want to say anniversary celebration. How are we promoting? It's the, it's an anniversary. It's the 25th anniversary. Um, I think it's a celebration of community for sure. Um, it's a, it's the longest running race that I've ever heard of, certainly for pancreatic cancer research. And so I, I think it means a lot of things to a lot of people, but it's, it's an anniversary and it's a celebration. How has it changed over the 25 years? significantly. <laughs> We've had a variety of sponsors and, and been in multiple places. We were at the VA for a long time before we were able to return to UCLA, uh, which is our, our home base for the foundation itself. So it's changed a lot. I, I think it's grown. The fundraising has grown. Um, the number of families attending and the teams have, have developed and the relationships have developed. We um, We've had a lot of things that have been consistent over the years, but there's just been a lot of a lot of growth. And I think it's because people want to see research advance um, and people have been increasingly uh, affected or at least that number, the numbers and the statistics are more known, um, you know, now than they were back in 1997. So uh, we're able to do a lot more outreach and uh, it's, it's just grown in every way. It really has. We did a few when you were at the the veterans and nothing wrong with being there. It was great, but really, really like the venue you're at now. The walk is a little bit easier too, just because of, you know, just the, the area, but uh, it was always a great event. You guys have done a fantastic job. Thank what you. can we expect to see this year? <laughs> well, last time I told you there was going to be, there would be a surprise and I wouldn't tell you everything. That's and right. Then- and then Serena Williams showed up <laughs> with her sister Venus. So I don't want to give too much away, but I, I can say that um, uh, we're doing a lot of things 
a lot of things that we've done before and and adding adding some new things. We've always had our Fit Family Expo. We're going to see some growth there. We have some really cool uh, vendors and exhibitors coming out this year. We have our Candyland um, Kid Zone, which will be sponsored by LA Parent this year with a ton of activities and extra exhibitors in there as well, uh, reading children's stories and bounce houses and uh, kits for parents uh, from uh, fun family brands. We've got yeah, there's there's going to be a lot happening. I think when you when you walk in and you grab your shirt and all of your gear is ready to go and you get to the opening ceremonies and Denise Dador, you know, welcomes the crowd and, and people start to gravitate towards the team lounge where we have um, well over a hundred teams that have gathered family, friends across the country. It really, it really feels like a warm and exciting uh, space. So there's an activity in every corner, Candyland Kids Zone, Expo, team lounge, stage, start line, we've got everything. And I think last time I forgot to mention the raffle, <laughs> which a lot of people really love. So a massive raffle and auction area. Also something very unique that you guys do is a lot of people dress up in a costume. Yes, because the race has always been um, either the last or the second to last week um, weekend of October. So last year it actually fell on Halloween, um, but it's always been at the end of October. So yeah, we have people come out in their costumes and we have a costume parade for the little kids and we have a costume contest for adults as well. Sounds like a lot of fun. I know that I've seen some very unique costumes in previous years. So it's something you that look forward to, right? <laughs> There's a lot of fun things. I think last year, one of my favorites was um, a family that dressed up as Jurassic Park. So they had something that looked like a shopping cart that was made into like a cage and the little kids inside were little dinosaurs. <laughs> it, was, it was adorable. Well, it's it's really nice to have an event like this that can put, I mean, because, you know, it's a depressing subject. Pancreatic cancer isn't the most, you know, uplifting thing to talk about. But to have an event like this where people can come out and meet each other who, you know, we're all going through something. Our stories are different, but we all are going through something. And um, do you mind? I'm sorry, I didn't ask you before. It's OK. Do you mind just sharing a little bit about your personal story? Is that OK? Or yeah, or yeah, not? sure. So. I lost my mom to pancreatic cancer in 2009, and she was a two and a half year survivor. It was a long time ago. It sounds like a long time ago now, but sometimes, you know, like a lot of us who have lost someone, it feels like it was yesterday on some days and forever ago on other, day, other days. Um, but I moved home to be a caregiver for her. Uh, my sister and I were 24 and 26 when she was diagnosed. So we were her uh, caregivers and we went to every doctor's appointment and um, every hospital visit, every chemo. Um, and we were, you know, there from beginning to end. She was a nurse for over 40 years, a registered nurse. And so she spent her life helping other people and did an amazing job. She was somebody that people called the glue. You know, she was the connector of family and friends and stuff. And so uh, people rallied around her and me and my my sister did uh, the same and, and did everything that we could. I obviously didn't know your mother, but just from what I know of you, I think you're a lot like your mom. You just seem to have that same, I don't know, you just keep everything together and you do it really well. So thank you for all you do. And you. Doing, right? <laughs> I know it's difficult. I lost my mom in, in 2013 after eight years and um, we moved her here from New Mexico. So it was, you know, a lot of similarities, but of course different, but it, it is, it's one of those, sometimes it seems like just yesterday and other yeah. times it seems so long ago. So um, but the nice thing about events like this is we can all come together, share our stories and just support each other and let everybody know they're not alone. Because a lot of times that that is how you feel so very much alone. Absolutely. Uh, I, I remember uh, at that time, you know, there were not events that, that we knew of that we could go to. We we went to a symposium or two, but we didn't know what was available. We didn't have a community. We went to places like the cancer support community, but even their survivor group 
you know Michelle, you know, her and her husband were were in those groups with me and my mom. And there just wasn't that much. So an event like this, uh, it's not just a race. It's not just, you know, for the expo and the Candyland Kids Zone. Like it really is a community coming together to support each other, uh, whether it is surviving patients or whether it's newly diagnosed patients or people that have lost someone that they love. Everyone has a different story. And those stories can be... Um, comforting sometimes, you know, from one survivor to another survivor, from one family member or caregiver to another family member or caregiver. Uh, those stories connect us and and it can be cathartic. That's my opinion as somebody who's, who's been through it as a family member. It is. It's just, it's good to have something others you can share with because for so long, uh, when we first heard about it or got the diagnosis or a family member got the diagnosis, you thought you were the only one because, yes. of, you know, we weren't really given much hope from doctors. So we always felt we're out there alone. So to have events like this where you can come together and about how many people do you expect at your event this year? We usually expect around 2,000 people. Oh, we usually expect around 2,000 people, um, at least 100 teams. And it's a wide variety, a mix of, uh, like I said, uh, survivors and patients and families and runners and children. Um, people of all ages. And, and that's really, honestly, like a, one of our five pillars of our mission statement is to unite uh, all generations and, and come together for, you know, health and wellness. So this is a big part of our purpose and our, and our mission as well. And I think this event does that because you go and there's people you know, in strollers, there's in wheelchairs, walkers, and just young. So you have a, a great a great age difference. And it is really nice to come in contact yeah. with these people. In fact, somebody just actually sent me a question. Uh, what is the course like? Is it safe for strollers, wheelchairs, and wagons? It is. I have heard that there's a, a, some slight hills, uh, but nothing major. And yeah, we have tons of, of strollers on the path and, and I've never heard any, any complaints about it. So I think it probably feels a little bit different for someone who's, who's running. I mean, wants to run up a hill, but, <laughs> but there's nothing, yeah, it's nothing major. And UCLA's campus is, it's gorgeous. I mean, it really is. I think that, you know, if you see the pictures of the event, people just kind of gather in these clusters. And, and even if they're wearing team shirts, you know, people have mixed up with each other and um, they're so busy talking and laughing and just enjoying the experience and the scenery that no one's coming back like, oh, that was so much work. There's <laughs> nothing like that. It was, it's, it's a pretty great course. It, it is. And actually somebody does, did text and want to know, is there a shortcut in case I can't finish this again? <laughs> I think that some races, not ours, would call that like the chicken exit or something like that. Where the cheaters, you, yeah, something like that, right? Get off it, yeah. Uh, we we don't. I don't believe that we have that this year. I'd have to check, but um, you can go onto our website www.lacancerchallenge.com and go to the FAQ section and and check that out. But. Yeah, I mean, you can turn around or you can walk as, as far as you want. If you're not ship timed and you're not a, a runner who's competitive looking to win a specific medal, then then it's up to you. You know, we just want you to have fun. <laughs> and yeah, and it is a lot of fun. And we won't shame you if you turn around and go the other way, right? There's, there's <laughs> no, no shaming no, going no. on. It's just a lot of fun. And uh, speaking of, you said a timed race. So it is. is there a way they can go and see what their results were? Are those printed yes. Print sometime? Yes, they register. They need to select chip timing if they want to actually compete in the race. And there is a results tent. So uh, they just have to make sure that they select chip timing so that we, we have that on their bib. Which brings me to talking about bibs, where I can share that Living Hope is a sponsor of the LA Cancer Challenge this year and a bib sponsor. So uh, if you're you. wearing your bib, you will see the Living Hope logo on there. Uh, you have uh, generously given to support this race, and we thank you for that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for the mention. That was just perfect timing. I didn't intend that, but it worked out well. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I've had people have submitted a lot of questions, but when I went on the website, that something that came to me that I didn't know and I wanted to ask you is, 
you have something how you can honor your loved ones. And there's something called a Kids Can Cure banner. Uh, a Kids Can Cure banner. We have, let's see, we have a team banner. We have the, the Kids Zone. There is a there is a banner inside the Kids Zone where kids can do crafts. Um, but what we really have is a quilt banner. Um, and that's that's where we ask people, you know, to contribute something. For a while, we would say, you know, if you have a team T-shirt, send us, you know, send us an extra one. And Aggie, who used, Aggie, our founder, who used to work in uh, fashion, is is still an incredible seamstress, and she will she will add a patch to that to that incredible quilt. And it has um, we we've been sent quilt squares that people have written dedications, you know, to a, a loved one or for their team um, and sent them in. And that is something that's draped around the start, the start uh, stage. So you'll see that as you're starting the race. So I, I think that's what they're referring to, the quilt banner. Oh my goodness. She does all that before there. Somebody does that and has it ready. Well, I mean, we, we add our teams have grown significantly, right? So not everyone has an extra t-shirt at the end of this, but it's a pretty big banner and there's lots of dedication. So um, yeah, she she adds a handful every year. And and if you take a moment to look at it, it's it's really cool. It really is. And where can they send that to if they want to do that? I mean, is it too late? Is there a deadline? They can no. They can still send it to um, to our office. Usually, people give us quilts at the not quilts. They give us their square or t shirt or something like that um, at the end of the race for the next race. But you can send it in now. Uh, you can send it to our office. You can send it to my attention, Sarah Banks, to the Hirschberg Foundation, and our our mailing address is two nine nine zero South Sepulveda Boulevard, and it's Suite three hundred C. And Los Angeles, the zip code is 90064. So you can still send that in. Um, don't wait. Don't wait much longer. But uh, yeah, that is that is something that you can do. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. And I'll put that at the end um, when we uh, have it uh, on the website and whatnot. We'll put the address and stuff in the websites all out there for everybody. Okay. Um, and this year, uh, who is the host? I think you did mention her and I'm sorry, but it just slipped out of my mind. Um, well, our, our hosts are always, you know, Aggie and Lisa, but our, our MC is Denise DeDore. And, and so she is a, a well-known reporter here in Los Angeles, and she has been with us for a really long time. So she, she has done an incredible job of MCing this event and um, introducing uh, Aggie and Lisa and talking about this cause, talking about pancreatic cancer and featuring uh, stories, talking about our survivors and and what we have going on. And, and the crowd loves her. The crowd absolutely loves her. So she's been with us for years and we're incredibly appreciative of, of the time that she puts in. Oh, good. And your honorary medical chair? You have one every year, right? We have one every year. And this year we have two. So we have uh, from UCLA Health, we have the Vice Chancellor and CEO of UCLA Health, uh, John Maziata. And we also have the President of UCLA Health, uh, Janice Spizo. So uh, they are co-chairs uh, because UCLA has, like I said, they're, they're home base for us because that's where we have our labs. That's where we host our symposium. We provide a lot of service services through uh, the IPU. It, it really is our home, which is why we're so happy to bring the LACC back there. So to have them as our chairs, uh, it's a huge honor. These are busy people. <laughs> These are they're running UCLA Health and they have, they're taking the time to uh, rally their troops uh, within UCLA and UCLA Health to bring out a team um, that will participate. So they will be there as well. And do you have your honorary starter picked yet? We have a, well, it's not a surprise, but we have uh, something special this year. We decided because it was an anniversary, we wanted, we didn't want just one um, honorary starter. So we're bringing back five of our past honorary starters. Uh, the honorary starter is always a survivor. And we wanted to really inspire hope this year. And so we have five 
that were past honorary starters, and they are survivors uh, that range from five to 22 year survivors. So all five of them will, oh, I just gave myself chills. <laughs> Yeah, you gave me tears already. So there, yeah, that's at yeah. the twenty-two. I mean, all they're all important, but it's so amazing when you hear a twenty somebody, you know, really up there in the double digits, right? Right. Well, we had um, we had Esther Lee as honorary starter last year, and you know, this this was a one-year survivor, you know, uh, in treatment, and so. For every, you know, survivor that we have up on stage, there's somebody that meets that same criteria, you know, in the audience. At, at the very least, you are going to see people that are uh, new survivors that want to hear stories that will inspire and motivate them to continue to, to fight. So that's why it's important to get, you know, some of these guests up there sharing their stories um, for anybody that is in their first year or, or had the Whipple or is in there in the beginning of chemo or just finished chemo. You want to hear someone like both speaking about your experiences and where you're at now. It gives, I would imagine as someone who is not personally a patient, I would imagine that it would give you uh, a significant amount of hope to see that, you know, statistics are just statistics and and that there are real people out there that are thriving. Yeah, most definitely. I, I want to hear the 22-year survivor. I have an idea who it might be, but I'm, I won't say. I'll keep the secret just until you make the announcement. No, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a secret. It's, it's Lee. It's Lee Ringuet. So, okay. yeah. 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 Yeah, they all have fantastic stories. And like you say, they're all an inspiration. Yes. Um, even, you know, just like somebody is aged, I'll say seasoned. It's just good to hear and even to, to remember back what it was like for that first year or whatever. So it's really, and I really I think it's really awesome that you have ones coming from the past to get up there and be your starter and to talk about their story because it's important. It's important for us to hear. So Yeah. Um, Even for the families who've lost someone, you know, I, I hear stories all the time about how much things have changed um, as far as treatment and support, um, whether it's financial support or um, support groups that are out there. I mean, there are so many things that are available now that weren't available for my mom. And I, I, although I wish that they had been available then, I am so happy that they're available for someone else's mom. You know, I'm so happy that, you know, we've been able to make the advances that we have um, in er every area of pancreatic cancer. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, too. And I like said, we really enjoy the event and love it. We love being part of it this year in a different way than we have been in the past. And lucky, I'm so happy we've had that opportunity. And thank you for giving that to us. And as far as putting on the event, what is your favorite part? I know a lot of work goes into it, but it's also very rewarding. What's your favorite part of it all? My favorite part? I think that at every LACC, and I've, I've been with the foundation for 10 years now, I think at every LACC, um, although I'm running around, you know, talking to everyone and, and, and like you said, I have my hands and everything, I always have a moment at some point where I am still and self-aware and just kind of look around myself and see uh, what's going on. And, and that's my moment because I look up and I see Aggie hugging a survivor. I see families talking to each other. I see someone wearing a shirt, you know, with their mom's photo. And it makes me think of, you know, my mom. I see uh, kids, you know, playing in the, the Candyland kids zone and enjoying themselves right before Halloween. Like they're not there necessarily to take on the heaviness of the subject, but they're there to honor their grandparents or their aunt or their uncle. And they're there wearing shirts too and, and, and helping to carry signs. I have a moment where I look around and I see, I see uh, joy and I see compassion and sweaty runners. <laughs> I, see, I see a little bit of everything. That is my favorite moment. Just looking, just doing, you know, a 360 turn and seeing everything that's going on. That's my favorite moment right there. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. 
for somebody who can't come? Is there a still, is there a virtual event this year? There is, and there, and there always has been, um, but it's definitely grown in that area as well since, uh, I shall not say the E word uh, of <laughs> 2020, but uh, yeah, we have we have a virtual race, and you can sign up for that as well. Um, there's a tab at the top of the website that says in person, um, and a tab that says virtual. So you can sign up for that. You can still get a shirt mailed to you, and um, you can still be a part of the race. And a lot of people do that. I think last year we had uh, somewhere around 35 states families and participants in 35 states and four countries. So um, that was, that was That's amazing. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, Australia, South Korea. I mean, it was just people in, in a lot of different places that have been touched by this, this disease and wanted to participate and wanted to do something um, to help. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't realize it had grown that big, but can you give us the website one la- one more time for people who want to sign up? And do you still need volunteers as well? We always need volunteers. <laughs> Every nonprofit needs volunteers, but yes, we love volunteers. Uh, the website is lacancerchallenge.com and you can volunteer. Um, you, there is a volunteer tab. You can go there and you can sign up to register um, or you can sign up to register as a volunteer specifically. You can, you can participate and volunteer. You can do one or the other. And there are assignments, you know, based on whatever you're comfortable doing. Um, some people like to work in the kids zone. Some people like to help with registration. Um, some people like to be in uh, one of my favorite booths, the purple ribbon tattoo booth <laughs> with the temporary tattoos. So there's there's something for everyone. Um, I think we'll even have some volunteer photographers this year and people volunteering to help with social media. So volunteers play a key role in, in our foundation. Oh, good. Well, thank you, Sarah, for joining us again today. And Living Hope is um, very proud to be a sponsor. It's been our first year there, and we're very proud. Thank you for that opportunity. And we just thank you for coming and talking more about the LA Cancer Challenge. I can't wait to see what you all have planned for the 25th annual celebration. So it's going to be awesome. Our theme is fight to the finish, you know, this year for LACC so specifically. And then we continue on into November. So uh, for Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, yeah, we're right on the heels of that. And, um, you know, for anyone that doesn't know, it is the 25th anniversary for the LACC, but it's also the 25th anniversary um, uh, for the Hirschberg Foundation. So we are commemorating that anniversary as well um, and have been throughout the year to recognize uh, everything that our supporters have helped us accomplish, everything that our researchers and um, donors and the medical community and survivors have all helped to, to, to get us to this, this point where we are right now, which is the point of change. You know, things are changing and, and we're happy about that. I do have to share one important piece of information with you before, okay. before we go. And that is, I spoke with our patient and family support coordinator, Amy Reese, this morning, and she informed me that she will uh, be accepting the invitation to come oh, on to Living Hope. Yay. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a tough one in coming. So thank you for whatever you did to help get that on. And we'll <laughs> go ahead. We'll get it going. So thank you. Yes, it's all. It's always just about timing. You know, she works one on one with a lot of patients, so she's she's a very busy woman. But she knows this is important, and so you have to give her a call. Uh, I will definitely. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Um, As long as you speak my name, I shall live forever. This episode (laughs) of Living Hope is dedicated to Sarah's mom, Jane Dorbanks. So thank you again, Sarah, for coming and sharing your story, the LA Cancer Challenge, the Hirschberg. Happy 25th anniversary, and we will celebrate on the 23rd when we see you in October. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, there you have it. Another great reason to tune in each and every time to Living Hope, a weekly journey designed to provide hope inspiration and education for those living with pancreatic cancer and sometimes a rallying cry for all of us to get together and show our support and remember those who've been on this march before us that's coming up at this uh 25th la cancer challenge 
If you want more, you can go to uh, the site we're going to give you in a second. And also, it's a great resource. Lots of great resources out there. We're going to give you one of them if you want to know more about your journey with pancreatic cancer or to know more about this event. And that is the contact, the number we gave you a couple times here. We'll give it to you one more time. The Hirschberg Foundation. Great folks. Had them on a couple times here over this course of this series. And, of course, they're deeply involved in pancreatic cancer research up at UCLA. Learn more, simply visit their site, www.pancreatic.org. You should know how to spell that one, P-A-N-C-R-E-A-T-I-C, pancreatic.org. And for all of us here at the OC Talk Radio Network, thanks for tuning in. Hope you'll share this with somebody and come out and see us as Living Hope continues to spread that message at events like this one coming up. Streaming live from our studios.